Can we trust science? Can we trust the fact is that, do we know that there is no other intelligent life in any other planet? Are we actually alone? We follow a, a realm of science that it teaches us about something, but it doesn't give us a full scenario of what science should be like. Science is part of us. We need to be aware of how science evolves. So these are the factors that I wanted to bring in. And it makes you think, and it makes you want to be part of that journey. Hi, this is um, Eric Valdespino, and I'm the author of The Last Alien Encounter, uh, Raising Edwin, and Otis, The Last Alien. I try to make people think about where you are in life when you read the books. I have an imagination, and um, it's, it fulfills my empty thoughts sometimes, and I get a lot of satisfaction from that. I started writing the first book about two and a half years ago, and it took me about six months to finish it. I was very aggressive with it, but um, what I do, I usually get up about four o'clock in the morning, every morning, and uh, I start writing um, when I wake up until about 7.30, quarter to eight, and I have breakfast, and then I go to work. Now. My work here, I don't have a boss because I'm the boss. Um, I will come to work and do whatever I do during the process of the day. And then I will take up maybe two or three more hours of that day. And I will think about what I was writing about, then I will continue. Everybody who wants to write a book about what they want to do, you have to be true to yourself you have to do a huge amount of research. You need to find an avenue in which you feel comfortable to, to explain. Now, science fiction is very, very important to me only because it's a, it's a passion, more or less. I love to watch science fiction movies. Um, I'm very much in tune with uh, life science itself. Uh, we, as people, I claim that we are aliens to perhaps other beings that don't have our intelligence yet. So we are very complex in a way that we want to um, enjoy our lives. But the people who I know that write books just like I do, you have to take that time, that selfish time, and do it unnecessarily with weird hours so you don't disrupt your family life because it's very easy to walk away and um, be in an office for four or five hours and you're, you're missing out on what's really going on in your life. So I, I balance that with my job. I balance that with my time frame. I, I balance that time with them because I have as much fun with them, my dog and my wife, as I do writing a book. Writing is very, very personal in a sense because it's coming from your brain, coming from your mind about how you feel about a particular subject matter. I like science fiction because it's very open-ended, so there's so much to it. When you do any kind of writing, um, you have to realize that people are going to read it that know about your subject matter far more than you do. Um, what I had to do is, uh, I had to do a huge amount of research uh, before I started writing. When you start writing any kind of genre, whether it be finding something on the floor that is damaged and rusty, and you look at it and you wonder who left that behind, and you start to realize that there in itself, that has got a history and it's got a story to tell.
when I started writing The Last Alien Encounter, that's actually my first book. There was a, a first part, which is part one, that is to form the characters in which they'll be traveling through all three, all three books in a sense. The idea was to invoke that somehow 10,000 years ago, we were visited by uh, aliens that were not so much human aliens or aliens that had flesh and blood. Uh, so I sort of invented the idea that we would be seeing an AI miner, three of them, come from a different galaxy to mine for a blue crystal. Now, the blue crystal, in a sense, represents, um, again, the idea of us living on this planet uh, with the, the idea that we need clean energy. We don't realize that we might have clean energy that doesn't require oil or diesel or anything of this nature, or even lithium batteries. We have, by all accounts, and we have this through various sources that crystals uh, can hold a huge amount of memory. And by doing so, I took that premise and I made The Last Alien Encounter sort of a, a genre that you would have people from another galaxy to come here and mine for that crystal that would be in certain caverns in Montana. The whole premise with um, trying to develop ideas and storylines is that you have to do research based upon what you believe science is gonna be like, the futuristic of science. And we, we don't explore that enough. We think about it, but we don't really talk about it. So in my books that I've been writing about, um, I explore those and I want people to, to ask those questions, you know, why are we burning fuel to send up astronauts to the moon? When we, in fact, we probably could send AI. AI has the ability to assess and to give back clinical reports based upon their intelligence. We don't use that. We should be using it. The, the whole premise with Raising Edwin, I think, reaches uh, a point to where there's no magic there. It's based upon futuristic things that we don't know what could happen in the future. And I'm not talking about magic tricks. I'm talking about real science that actually could make something happen. And um, the storytelling that I do allows you to think about um, the very simple fact that we have so much to learn and we don't really have enough time in our lifespan to learn all of that. That's just something that's gonna happen within the next two or 300 years because um, we need to have intelligent uh, people around us and why not have a companion of AI that can help us or direct us and do the right thing for us as people. Because humans have a tendency to be a little bit, a little bit greedy or independent thinking, and uh, when left alone, they are they virtually can demise themselves. And so there's a there's a lot of that that's going on right now in our world. But I do believe that there is a fix to that, or at least I think there could be a fix to it by incorporating uh, AIs that would help govern, you know, different cities. That's primarily what I think I got into when I was talking about the British Columbia, because I think they're more open than uh, we are uh, trying to develop that kind of a, a, you know, a system. The interesting part about Otis, uh, The Last Alien, again, the characters that I try to put in there are meaningful they're strong characters, and they have the ability to pull the story with them. So you just don't talk about, you actually are in their life, and uh, you see what they see, 
and I and I force that to the reader to understand this is something that when you read about what happened to Otis when he was a child, um, you're saddened over what Mia sees. It's an emotional book in the same time because it creates you to feel what she feels. And she's a very strong, independent person. And she's the leader of something that if it were to continue, we would have a brilliant um, um, society built on that kind of premise, that everybody there is to help each other, not for themselves, but for the entire community of Ode. And that's what Ode was about. When she left, when she went off, there were more than you know 2,000 people in this village, all living together uh, symbiotically with each other, uh, caring for each other, rather than just a society that doesn't care about you, it only cares about themselves. And so that's what distinguishes wisdom versus intelligence. So, um, you know, there's a lot for us to learn about what they went through in this book, because it does, I try to share that ideology that we're not 100% safe if we're not all together. If you're not together, then you're vulnerable to other things that could hurt you. And that's why it's so important to be part of the same team, in a sense. I like the idea of having a story read back to me so I can think about what I'm writing and it allows me to, uh, to develop um, the storyline even further. 24 years of travel, the Illyrian spacecraft finally arrives to Earth. In the boundless reaches of the cosmos, the crew of the Illyrian spacecraft embarked on their mission, wielding the power of a solid and a phenomenon of superluminal singular waves to manipulate the very fabric of space-time itself. The biggest uh, stepping stone that I had writing any story is that um, you have to write things that I believe are necessary for the entertainment part of it. I, I think when you read something, you have to read something that does make common sense become the reality of it, not a fantasy. Uh, I like to write things that have uh, a source to make you think. Most of the problems that we have um, within the book, or at least the research that I did on the book, um, is that I had to get to the point to where um, when you start to read it, you get something out of it. If there's a, there's a story, there's a link that has um, science put together, there's things that when you do read it, you, you begin to understand that there's not enough of us to trust. Can we trust science? Partly we can. Can we trust the fact is that, do we know that there is no other intelligent life in any other planet? Are we actually alone? We have a hard time believing that because life can go off anywhere in any planet, depending upon you know its, its environment primarily. So all these questions that I have uh, growing up as a, a person, I started to put that down when I write a story because if I'm thinking about it, I'm sure that other people are thinking about it as well. We are um, unique. Uh, we're so-called intelligence, uh, intelligent uh, beings, and now we're called, you know, spiritual be beings in a sense. Um, but our our whole attitude towards uh, existing is that we don't think about uh, what's going to happen in the next 25 to 30 years. We're oblivious to what we do on this planet in a sense. And we don't understand that we have to evolve our science. We have to evolve our ideology and we have to evolve the way we cooperate and coexist with the rest of the humans that are on this planet. I know this sounds kind of odd to talk about that, but the real problem is that we have to become better stewards of our planet and we have to become better better people amongst among us and stop the unnecessary acts of uh, 
racial profiling or, you know, their team is better than ours. All that is nonsense. The stories that I want to write about and the stories that I'm trying to expose is that um, we have a responsibility in writing uh, about something. Sure, it could be fantasy in a sense, but it still, it still pinpoints the questions that you need to ask. And that is, are we doing enough to better us as humans? And um, I write primarily for people that want to know uh, what it would be like if we were actually in the future. Things that we need to realize that people in other planets perhaps could be more and more intelligent than we are and want to share their technology with us if we were only uh, accepting those facts that there could be that possibility of happening. And I think that's um, primarily what I wanted to write about is is to grab the interest of some of the readers and have them uh, look at um, that as an option. You know, is to read about certain things that nobody ever wants to talk about. Writing um, sparks your imagination and writing about subjects that are unknown um, conjures up different scenarios that are available for us to understand that we may not see everything that's going to happen in the future in today's world. We have to prepare ourselves to what's going to happen perhaps in the next 300 years for our society because we're never going to see what's going to happen with our future right now. It's not, it's not made for us to look at or take advantage of. Um, what I want our readers to look at and to read the books that I produce is strictly for enhancing the idea that artificial intelligence might be the way to answer some of these questions that we realize that if we put billions of dollars into producing artificial intelligence that would be beneficial for the human race what would be the answers that that AI would be able to give us to explore the avenues in which would make us better people, better a better humanity on this planet? That is where I would like to see us go. I don't know where it's all going to end up at, but the very simple fact is that, you know, I got this far in this very short period of time, and now I'm doing this video for anybody who wants to see it or wants to listen to what I have to say. I'm happy that people like it, and that's what I care about. It's like, I'm not in it to make a huge amount of money. I'm in it because I enjoy, first of all, I enjoy writing. I like to, um, conjure up thought and ideas that we all need to be responsible for. Not one person, but everybody, a unit, would be so much better to work at as, as a group rather than an individual. Hi, this is Eric Valdespino, and I just want to make sure you understand that these books are all ready and published and they're for sale. Uh, on Amazon.com. Uh, also, they're on uh, Barnes & Noble and also on Authors Press. I believe that once you've read one, and it's hard for me to, to give you the best one to read first because they're all good, um, but uh, once you read one, you're gonna want to read more. But the books are extremely entertaining and they're made primarily for family. They're made primarily for you to think about uh, the aspects of the world that we live in today and the future, perhaps, of what if we were uh, discovered by intelligent beings from a different galaxy. And those are the questions that we'll never know. We'll un we, we still don't quite understand who we are as people and where we came from. But um, after the Big Bang, you might say, uh, here we are 4.5 billion years later, uh, I'm talking to you on a video. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. But um, 
here's the evolution of man and the evolution that I took to produce these books primarily for you as a reader.